the power vacuum is where a very powerful individual who has been quite instrumental in protecting your work has suddenly gone and they've disappeared. And in a way, it's a bit like power structures in any organisation that has been around for a while and is fairly, fairly stable. All of the power relationships will be fairly static. There'll be a little bit of give and, give and take around it, but broadly there will be equilibrium within the power structures of the organisation. Now, if there's a very powerful person that is suddenly taken out, what's going to happen? Well, the whole system is going to be destabilised. And the power vacuum political dilemma is when your work is going to be seriously affected by that destabilisation and that, that sort of sudden current state of, or, or a new state of flux. And part of the problem is, I mean, you, you're just getting on with your work normally. And if you're not paying attention to the way power is working, and frankly, why should you in a lot of cases? Um, if you're not normally doing that, suddenly this can become a big shock and if a powerful person who is very close to your work has gone quite often there is a lag before you start to feel the pain because what is going to happen here is old battles that have been fought are going to be fought again people are going to look at what you're doing and potentially there will be a land grab on what you are doing your role or part of part of your role might suddenly disappear before the powerful person was keeping it all in, keeping everybody, all the enemies at bay, if you like. Uh, but because they've gone, suddenly there's going to be a lot of skirmishes going on. Decisions that were made, fixed, are going to come be very quickly unravel. And the problem is, it's only when the unravelling starts that people start to realise there is a problem and think life becomes a little bit more difficult. Part of the solution and part of the way you avoid doing this is being aware of it as a risk to your team, to your work. And if that is a risk, you can go through some fairly standard procedures or processes that are well documented elsewhere to mitigate some of the risk, to start to prepare for some of the some of the eventualities or consequences if that risk starts to happen and be in a much better position to be able to, well, protect your lot, protect what was originally being looked after by that powerful person who suddenly disappeared. So to go through some of the some of the ideas on what to do if you suddenly find yourself in this position, I think number one is recognise it's not necessarily a problem, it's a huge opportunity because potentially this is your moment. This is your moment. If you've got the awareness, if you've got the capability and the motivation, it's an opportunity for you to step up. Your work is being done in a particular way for a particular reason and that doesn't necessarily become inv invalid just because a powerful person person has left. So see it as an opportunity, look at it from a very positive perspective, but also start to look at it from a, a strategic perspective. Because while that vacuum is there, while there is nobody else in place to come and do that role or protect that turf, protect that territory, there's a job for you and something needs to happen and you could be doing it. So what you need to do then is sort of really sort of get very clinical about it and say, so, OK, so this is what has happened. Now, what are the risks to the work that we are doing? And I'm not just talking about you, but it could be your colleagues as well, your peers who are similarly affected by this powerful person leaving. But come on, so start to chart them down. So who could come to try and drag drag away some of our some of our operation who could sort of try to overturn decisions that have been made in the past what projects might now be destabilized because that powerful person was keeping some opposition at bay and if you start to chart those out and start to look at okay so what's the probability of these things actually coming to pass you can potentially and get get your, get your team together get everybody together and talk it through you can start to work out a plan of action for how you're going to defend yourself until such time as the organisation sees fit to, to plug that gap. If in fact it does, because quite often when a powerful player goes out, I have a bit of a suspicion that they'll let people fight it out to see where, where it all lands, because that might be more optimum for the organisation. Yes, there could be some dirty tricks going on and some, you know, sort of more, 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 um, more sort of um, nasty stuff going on. But quite often I've seen a lot of organisations take somebody out or let somebody let somebody out in a way to see how the system reorganises itself from a paradigm 
dynamic power is rarely designed in an organization and i think that's a big big gap in a lot of organizational development type roles and i think there's an opportunity for an organization to sort of take that sort of seriously but i'm starting to get onto another topic now so i'll come to the the third one which is really once you've done the analysis once you've looked at the risk and you're preparing yourself now move into the spotlight seek opportunities to get out there on the front foot to actually protect the turf to protect the work that you're doing to protect the decisions that have already been made and get out there and be proactive rather than wait for the missiles to come get out there and actually take the preemptive action so that you can make sure that you know people might notice the person's gone but they will be under no illusions that that isn't going to make any difference to the decisions that have already been made um, yes it's going to be tough but again this is where the opportunity comes in so get out there practice you might want to manage some of your your stakeholders your career stakeholders as well get them bought in and maybe some mentors bought in so a support structure around you as you start to do this um, there is a question about should you be doing it or should it be somebody else's job or should the organization decide who should be doing it but to me my way of looking at it and maybe david will have a different different view of it but my way of looking at it is you know don't seek permission go out and seek forgiveness if if something goes wrong but get out there with positive intent and make things happen